In this video, you will learn the basics of defining variables specifically with respect to string variables. You should already be familiar with running Python and executing the print command. For this lesson, I'll run code straight from the Python interpreter, as it's quicker than writing programs in nano and then exiting to the terminal whenever I need to run them. So far we've used the print statement, which can output text to the terminal. To a computer, text is simply a string of characters, which includes letters, numbers, spaces, and symbols. In programming, we refer to these lines of text as strings. In this print command, we are telling the computer that we wish to print to the terminal everything that is between the first and second quotation mark. Obviously, that address is rather hard to remember, so it would be nice if we could get the computer to remember the address for us. We can do this by using a variable, which can be thought of as a container which holds information. To begin with, we need a name for a variable. I'll call this variable address. Next, we need an equal sign, which means we are setting our variable equal to something. And lastly, we need a value for the variable to store, which in this case is the very long address. When declaring the variable, we still need to include the quotation marks to show the beginning and the end of the string. When I press enter, it doesn't look like anything happened, but the variable is now temporarily stored in the computer's memory. If we wish to print the address to the terminal, we only need to type print followed by the name of the variable we want to use. So far so good, but what if we want to store this string in a variable? This causes an error since Python will interpret this as the string between these two quotation marks. Python then has no idea what to do with hey to me. To solve this problem, we can instead write strings with single quotation marks. When single quotation marks are used, Python looks for the first and second single quotation mark. And since we only have two of those at the beginning and end of the string, this works perfectly. But consider this string. Again, we have an error because now our second single quotation mark is in the middle of our string. There is one other way we can define strings, and that is by using a set of three quotation marks. Now the start and end of the string starts and ends with a triple set of quotation marks. And if we print this to the terminal, we get our desired string. There's a lot more that can be done with string variables, but I'll leave that for another video. But before ending, a few rules about naming variables. First off, they can't include spaces. In this case, Python doesn't know what to do with the second word cat. If you want something like this, you can always use an underscore. Or you could just use mixed case, which is my personal preference. Another rule is that you should only use alphanumeric characters. That is, only letters and numbers, though underscores are fine. Something like this will cause an error due to the exclamation mark. Also, if you use numbers, they can't be at the start of the name. One cat equals Bob, unacceptable. On the other hand, cat1 equals Bob, no problem. Lastly, there are a few reserved words that you cannot use. These are words that Python has given special meaning to. We've already seen one of these, the print command. If we try to have a variable equal to print, we see that we run into an error. Here, Python thinks you're trying to print something and then gets confused when it sees an equal sign. Now, reserved words should be easy enough to avoid so long as you're a little creative with the names you give your variables.